everybody out there and welcome to a new segment we are calling Getting to Know Gray 17. My name is John. I'm one of the co-hosts of the Gray 17 podcast, my Babylon 5 podcast. And I'm going to take the next couple of weeks to get to know my fellow co-hosts and allow you to get to them, get to know them a little bit better as well. So first up with me here, we have one of my favorites. Don't tell the rest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Emily. Emily, thank you for joining us. And please take a moment to introduce yourself. All right. Well, I am Emily and I am one of the newbies on the podcast and probably the one who glares at Scott the most <laughs> and gives him the look of, I hope you choke on your words every time he says, we'll talk about that behind the rim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. As a, a fellow newbie, I can feel your pain because I absolutely hate when they say that. Um so let's talk Gray 17 then. So why don't you tell us how did you hear about the Gray 17 podcast and what made you want to be a part of it? Um, Scott actually has been, well, he spent months badgering me about it. He was like, hey, I think he actually mentioned it like two years ago. And I was like, yeah, sure, fine, whatever. Didn't think much of it. And then last year he was like, yeah, we're actually going to get this started because there's some things happening. And I was like, well, I don't have a lot going on in my life, so sure, what the heck, I can watch a show, it does, it's not that big of a deal, <laughs> I can do this. Had you heard about Babylon 5 before? Uh, no, I actually hadn't, so it was just kind of, it was all new to me, I was just like, oh, a new sci-fi show, sure, and I love Star Trek Deep Space Nine, you'll hear me say that repeatedly, and Scott's like, well, if you like Deep Space Nine, you'll like this, and I thought, well, okay. <laughs> and if you're wrong, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of friends, it's a good transition. So clearly, you know, Scott, mm -hmm. um, maybe walk us through how do you know, or did you know beforehand any of the rest of the hosts? Um, I knew Scott and Mike, we all went to high school together. Um, I actually became Facebook friends with Blake a few years back. I think we were trolling a homophobe on someone's Facebook post. <laughs> Because that's a really great way to bond. Right. Um, and then everyone else I met when the podcast started. Okay, great. Um, so you mentioned work. Do you want to walk us through what you do for work now or any interesting jobs you've had in the past? Um, I am currently a stay-at-home mom. So I oh, guess nice. my job is, yes, managing a small human, which is not that easy. <laughs> I, yeah, my sister is a, a stay-at-home parent, and at first I used to give her a little gruff for it, and then I went to visit and stayed with her and the kids during the day, and I was like, oh, okay, I want to quit this job. This is horrible. <laughs> you have it infinitely worse than I do. No, thank you. So, um, there are those moments where you're just like, okay, and can I run away today? No, no, I cannot. All righty. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was telling her, I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know if I'm feeling it tomorrow. I might just call in sick. And she's like, oh, that must be nice. And I was like, well, you can call in sick. She goes, yeah, who, who am I calling in sick to? <laughs> Who's going to take care of the kids? I was like, all right, fine. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And it's really bad if you're sick and the kids not, because then they're full energy and you're like, you know, if you got 10%, you're like, well, we might survive the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, being super busy like that, uh, how do you find time and what are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do when you're not making sure a little human doesn't die? Um, I like reading. I do love to read. And I also do planners with stickers, like paper planners with planner stickers and stuff, because that um, 80s child and sticker lover never grew up. So it's just the more adult way to get to play with stickers and give myself the illusion I have my shit together, which I don't at all in the slightest. Uh, that's so funny you mentioned stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Um, I say that though. And then I also enjoy reading. And I know recently you and I were talking about our love for a website, Thrift Books. Yes. Um, and I just got some books in and I hate that they put stickers on the books. I understand they have to, but mm -hmm. it annoys the ever-loving hell out of me and I have to try to take them off. And so I'm always constantly like, barely pulling them or heating them up so I could take them off because I can't stand them being on there. And I can't stand any residue if I take them off and it gets left. Yeah. I actually don't like them being on there, but I don't try to take them off because I'm too afraid it'll like pull some of the binding off or it will leave the residue. And I know there's actually like sticker remover stuff that I haven't bothered to try, but that might work. Now, let me ask you this question. So you read a lot of books. Have you ever thought about writing a book? And if so, what would you write? I had, 
You know, I actually have not thought of okay. like I have a friend that um was writing a book and I'm really hoping he finishes that up so I can read it. Um and he actually had asked me that. He's like, have you ever thought about writing a book? I'm like, no, because I don't know what I would write about. Um, which is kind of funny because one of the types of books I like is autobiographies by random people. Like they don't have to be a celebrity. They can just be some random person who decides, yeah. hey, I'm going to write this book about my life because it's kind of funny or quirky, you know, and I love those. And I was like, I mean, maybe my life would be funny enough, but I don't know about yeah. that. There you go. There's your autobiography right there, right? Your own autobiography. Maybe I'll do a tell all about our podcast when this Ooh. is all over. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, I thought some things we talked about would stay in the group. <laughs> the 17 <laughs> podcast book, Behind the Scenes. Uh, the true Hollywood story. I'd be down for that. I joked about that, I think, right when we first started. I was like, oh, I can't wait for the e-true Hollywood story of the fall, the rise and fall of Grey 17. Uh, okay, when you're not reading, how do you waste time most often? Uh, Facebook. We all know Facebook is a time sucker. Like, you go on because you want to do something specific and then like an hour later you're like why am I still on here what am I doing here I don't even know watching videos of something probably <laughs> so you're a passive scroller or are you an active because you mentioned you met Blake uh doing some trolling yourself uh so are you an active participant or a passive scroller um anymore it's pretty passive scrolling I just I don't have the energy or enjoyment of engaging with random people, especially since many of them seem to be coming increasingly hostile with the exception of our Facebook group. Like that's a fun place to be, but otherwise you know, I'll read, I'll read comments. I'll regret reading comments. And then I keep scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Going down a comment wormhole is, um, man, it, it can something. be a real, it's sometimes it's better than movies. You know what I mean? It's if you come across something, you don't really know, maybe it's a friend of a friend and there's some drama going and you're just going through and you're like, I am invested in this story and must know the outcome. So there's, there's definitely fun um, to, to be had there. Uh, let's throw some crazy ones. So you, you have some pets. Yeah. Um, I have a fish right now. That's all I got. Okay. Well, if your fish could talk, what do you think they might say about you? Um, I need to do a better job at decorating the tank. It needs some updates or fishy. Is it like updates like the classic little castle and underwater fish guy or underwater diver guy or? Let's see. Right now, I think it's just plants. And I had found some really cute like mid-century themed decorations, but they got pulled out and cleaned. I need to get those back in there. They okay. had like a little fish drive in. and. What kind of fish do you have? It's just a beta. Oh, okay. I, my brother-in-law is big into fish and he's got a, you know, good size aquarium and he's got all this stuff. He spent many, many an hour trying to teach me about fish and aquarium and how to keep, he's got a saltwater tank and, and Ooh. look more power to him. It's great. I'm glad he's into it, but I'm like, dude, I, I, that is, it's not my jam. We had a 55 gallon freshwater tank years ago. And then mm -hmm. my husband had to go away for work for a while and I was stuck with it and it, it did not go well. <laughs> there, there, I ended up having someone come over and pulling the fish out and taking him to a local aquarium. Cause I'm just like, yeah, I can't take care of these. We had, um, I I'm assuming, yeah. Cause we had cichlids and apparently they managed to reproduce because I saw one eat the babies. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, and I'm done. We're done. I don't want any baby eating happening in my house. It was shockingly an ex more of an expensive habit than I would have thought. When he was telling me like how much some of the fish costs, how much some of the, uh, just a tank and, and all that stuff costs, I was, I was pretty shocked. Yeah. Salt water gets really pricey. Now my dog, if she was still around, uh, she would tell me I need to watch better TV because she used to judge me all the damn time. She would just sit on the couch and stare at me like, really, you're watching this. This is garbage. Well, do share. What is your favorite garbage television? Uh, it's, well, since we're talking garbage and not good shows, it would be yeah. Dawson's Creek and Gilmore Girls. <laughs> All right. I was, listen, that's more respectable. When people ask me like trash TV, I think like love is blind Jersey shore. I go to trash, usually <laughs> trash reality TV. So at least you have something scripted that th there are fan bases out for people do at least enjoy it. And they're, they're actually trying reality TV. I feel like they're just, 
Yeah. If I watch reality TV, it generally falls more into forensic files and homicide hunter, which, you know, <laughs> not the greatest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I do enjoy a little true crime every now and then, but do have to step away as to not go full on psycho. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could switch lives with any person throughout history or today for one day, who would you choose? Hmm. Who would I choose? That's kind of tough. Who do I think would be interesting? And again, for one day. So it's not like you get one month, you get one, one day. Oh, that's tough. Cause I think it would be fun to be Adam Sandler for a day because oh. the amount of bullshit you could get away with and just random ridiculousness would probably be a really good time. Yeah. Um, but I also think it would be cool to be like, okay, so I love Pink Floyd and I've seen Roger Waters twice. I think it would actually be cool to be him to like get the thrill of putting on his concerts because I I know he can be kind of controversial with stuff, but the dude can put on a show. Like yeah. Yeah. his shows are phenomenal. And I think it would be cool to see it from his perspective. That's a good choice. And since we're in music, let's let's talk then. What is your go-to karaoke song? I do not karaoke. I cannot sing. <laughs> I I would not, that would be like me punishing other people. So I would have to be really mad to sing at people. (laughs) Listen, let me say this as someone who enjoys karaoke. I actually enjoy the people who are not quite as good more than the people who are good because we're not at a real concert. This isn't the radio. I did not pay a ticket to come see some random dude named Joe wail his heart out to some Leonard Skinner song. If I want to listen to Leonard Skinner, I would listen to Leonard Skinner. I want to see Joe get up there because this is his favorite jam and he is singing it for everyone to hear, no matter the quality. So when you are having your own karaoke concert in your car, what is your go-to song that you would belt out? Mm, that's kind of tough because it really can depend on the day because sometimes you got to go back to like the love of the 80s but then there's some good 90s stuff or go old school and go it's raining men that is a fantastic song i don't care who you are when that comes on and that chorus hits you're belting it i i'm a fan i'm a fan um all right uh what is one question since we're doing an interview uh you wish people would ask you more Mm, let's see what do I wish people to ask more Mm, what is your favorite dinosaur I really do think we all like most of us love dinosaurs as a kid yeah I think most of us still do love dinosaurs (laughs) we just don't talk about it Well, Emily, this was a cheap ploy to get you to do my job for me. So let me ask you this next question. (laughs) What is your favorite dinosaur? I do like the little velociraptors. Oh, okay. Now, do you like them because Jurassic Park made them seem really cool? Do you like- Well, that's where it started. But then after having a kid and watching Dinosaur Train way too many times, but still a great show. Seriously, it's good. Um, No, still velociraptors. They're fun. Okay. But same. I, I mean, I think like everyone else, I was, uh, what, nine when Jurassic Park came out. And so the Velociraptor was both terrifying and my favorite thing at the same time, which was yes. quite a mix. <laughs> and there's little micro raptors too, that are like even smaller and super tiny. Um, okay. What question do you wish people would ask you less? Um, for someone who reads a lot, I tend to get asked, what's your favorite book? And I can't, I, I, like I do not have one favorite book. <laughs> that is a trick question. <laughs> not <laughs> be answered. Scratch that off. Not going to ask Emily <laughs> that. Okay. Um, I agree that when people ask for a best of something, especially generic, like a book or a movie, or it gets very difficult because <clears throat> if you love it, you know, you, one, you probably have lots of options. And to your point about the karaoke, changes on the day. Sometimes you're in a happy mood and this hits you. Sometimes you're in a sad mood and that hits you. And so, um, yeah, I I get that, but. Yeah, I've had books that I will, I will recommend. They were phenomenally written. They were amazing. There was one also gave me nightmares for a month. And I was literally haunted by this book for a solid year, like flat out traumatized. It was a great book. 
It's uh, Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. Highly recommend it. It is phenomenal. Well, I don't know if I want to not sleep for a year. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if that's the best recommendation, but it's not like the zombie kind of nightmare. It's um, talking about the generational trauma of like slavery and Jim Crow in America, mm. and um, like some of the spiritual devastation because of it. And that was the part that was just like so. It, the way she wrote about it, it was it, like, I don't know how to explain it other than haunting because some of it was, I mean, obviously tragic and dark, but yeah, it really, yeah, it stuck with me. <laughs> what was the name of that again? Sing Unburied Sing. Okay. I'll have to check that out. I, like I said, we, I just got probably 15 books from thrift books. That wasn't one of them, but now I know I can add it to the list. And I think I've earned, I don't know how many free books now from collecting all those points. Yeah, that's why I made my last order. I had earned a free book and it was about to expire because I had forgotten. So I had to go fill up with some randomness. Nice. All right. What's something you dislike that everyone else seems to like? Uh, does other people count? <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, no, not really. I'm not really big into sports. Like I know people get super, super into sports and I just, yeah, yeah. That's not me. Like it's fun. Like it was fun when I used to live near St. Louis to go to Cardinals games because it's fun to actually be there. But like watching sports on TV, I, I it's I'm like, no, you're cutting away, but I want to see or they're like talking over stuff. And I just I don't care for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I'm a giant sports fan, but I get it. Lots of people are not. And I want to try to have conversations like, Oh, did you see this thing? They're like, what? I don't care. Like what? <laughs> um, all right. Now let's flip that. What's something that you like that most people seem to dislike. Oh, I don't know. I mean, like books. Um, I can't really think of anything that I would like that. I don't think other people like nothing's coming to mind at the moment. Okay. Let's get to the last couple of questions I got here for you. Um, what is your favorite memory of Gray 17 so far? Oh, probably our interviews that we've done because, I mean, I think most of us, when we started this, we thought it was just going to be us. We might have a few fans. It would just be something fun to like hang out and talk about with friends, but to actually get to interview cast members has been just beyond amazing. I, I, I never thought it would happen. i it wasn't even in the realm of possible things to happen so that we got to do it has been great. I'm actually hoping we get to do more. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun and blew my mind. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what's the thing you're most looking forward to with Grace 17? Um, hopefully getting more interviews. I'm really hoping we can somehow finagle an uh, interview with Jeffrey Combs. I'm going to throw that out there. So maybe someone knows him and can hook us up with that. <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. <laughs> all right. So I think what uh, I'm going to end all of these interviews with is the final question is going to be, give me two truths and a lie. Don't tell me what the lie is. We'll leave that for guesses in the comments. And okay. then maybe um, before we release the next episode, you can tell us what the lie is. All right. So let's see. What can I tell you? Um, I love Bon Jovi. Um, I'm terrified of snakes. Okay. And uh, I still sleep with stuffed animals. Okay. So those three, fan of Bon Jovi, terrified of snakes, still sleeps with stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. All right. If you think you know which one Emily is lying to us about, drop it in the comments below and we will reveal the answer uh, in the coming weeks. Um, okay, Emily, that's all I've got. Uh, this has been fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time to do it. Uh, anything you want to uh, leave off for, for anyone watching this or anything you want to say? No, this was fun. I like doing this. I'm glad you thought to do this so our fans can get to know us a little bit better. As, yeah. You know, not just random people talking about a TV show, but, you know, kind of humanoids. Yeah, well, I think uh, after I interview everybody once, maybe we'll, we'll come back to it uh, season by season moving forward and get some updates. So. Um, okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, this was Getting to Know Gray 17. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for Emily for coming on and answering my questions. Uh, 
If you enjoyed what you see here and you want to see or hear the Gray 17 podcast, the main episode on this channel, um, those links will be provided below. Please consider giving us a like, a comment, a review, uh, again, a follow or subscribe anywhere you get both podcasts and here on YouTube. Um, for <clears throat> Getting No Grave 17, I'm John and with me has been Emily. Thank you much. Thank you.